Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. This morning we have a unique view as we're going to do our channeling session this morning because I figured a sunrise is a good optimistic start for the day. And I kind of need that <laughs> this Monday. Ah. <sighs> Also, I haven't been able to sleep much. I thought, hey, let's catch a sunrise and have a conversation with an afterlife celebrity guest, which I would like to be Prince. So the intention is to connect with Prince in the afterlife. Now, a couple of reasons why I want to talk with Prince today. The first is that I had originally expected to go to Paisley Park in their relaunch of their after dark dance party on Saturday night. However, Saturday kind of unfolded energetically and I just didn't feel like it was a fit to go out and do that. So although I was kind of sad, like I'd been looking forward to it, I wasn't all that sad because I just knew my energy wasn't in a place to be able to handle that many people and that much fun at one time. So... Mm. I'm gonna have some coffee while I'm having a conversation, okay? So that's the first thing. I kind of planned that I would do that, go to Paisley Park and then have a conversation with Prince. And then the end of this week also, I have a good friend of mine in a couple of days who's gonna turn half a century old. And let me just be clear, she turns half a century before I do. You know who you are. You know who you are, my sister. Not my real biological sister, but my princely sister <laughs> she's like a sister to me happy birthday you know who you are and uh i'm glad you're older <laughs> not by much but i'm glad you're older all right so we're gonna channel with prince this morning i'm already in a better mood look at that oh, good because the world needs a happier bridget <laughs> hmm. all right prince so talk to me about Okay, so there's so many things we could talk about. Birthdays. But I know that in the religious practice that you were in alignment with later in your life, the Jehovah's Witness, um, you, they didn't really believe in the birthday thing. So I... And we've talked about that in lots of other videos. So that's kind of, that's kind of been there, done that. Um, oh, I have good... I have... Okay, so... Here's the deal. I can feel him, by the way, you guys. He's super easy to connect with. Whether you're a fan or not, it does not matter. You don't have to have some kind of loyalty or pre-qualification of allegiance in this lifetime. You can discover musicians, music, art, artists, famous people, etc. at any point. Their dialogue of work is their energy imprint. That is the healing that they've left, the medicine that they left, the encouragement that they've left, especially when it has to do with words or music because of the vibrational intention of what that means really. Because we are energetic beings, so you feel the energy. So my point is you're feeling this energy. If you're an empath, open up and feel his energy. He's got a lot of it. Oh, let's talk about not sleeping. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So Prince, I know that you didn't sleep much. He literally kind of looks at me side-eyed and says, really? I know that was artificially created a bit. Hmm. He says, um, it's kind of always been my style though. He said, I've always kind of been a night owl. He says, um, that's common. That's common for people who create. It's like when you feel, you feel this, the inspiration that comes over you and, and you just have to move. You have to put yourself in a place where you can then create, where everything is in arm's length. Like he's literally showing me like he, he had to do arrangements in music, you guys, that didn't have to have everybody else involved right away because if all of his stuff was at arm's length, then he could just create something and whip it up and then make it better if he wanted to or enhance it or let somebody else listen to it and change it around a bit later. 
I can totally relate to this, Prince, because that's kind of how I work too, is I feel like, and probably many people who are creatives who are watching this channeling video can relate. So whether you're a writer, <clears throat> an entrepreneur, a teacher, and all of a sudden you get this great idea for a lesson plan or a, you know, a science experiment or something, or um, an artist and get inspired for a painting. And you just kind of have to move with that and go into your creative space. So everyone should have a creative space, whether it be a studio or a room in your house or a four season porch or your garage or your shed or whatever that is. So you can have some space for that. It feels like you had a little bit of like ADHD. Is that accurate? And he says, uh, he says, mm, 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 mm. Hyper focus. He says, I can really focus on things that really matter to me. He says, really, really matter to me. And he's talking about human rights issues, um, civil justice issues. He's very passionate right now, you guys, about human rights issues, things like racism, inequities, inequality. Um, oh yeah, let's not talk about that. Not talk, let's not talk too much politics. You know, I'm thinking about the United States and the Supreme Court. That's what I'm thinking of. So I'm not, I don't want to get into political debate with Prince in the afterlife. <laughs> he says, ah, oh, Bridget, you know. He's like, oh, you know, with your little mystical powers, he says, you know, you know, it isn't like that. It's not like that. I know, I know. And people are going to have a challenge, Prince, to feel your energy. Sometimes I think now in my channeling videos when we have these conversations, because this is how it is for me real life. Like this is what psychic is like for me. <laughs> we have conversation and you have to listen and feel carefully to get his portion of our conversation because like right now he's his personality won't necessarily come all the way through because he's not attached to a person right now he's not attached to a human body he doesn't necessarily have the physical traits and attributes in the context of mass or matter but he has that energetically enough so that you and I can recognize his energy so talk to me about the sleep thing and talk to me about like focus and that kind of thing he says um your body has its own cycles. He says you go through seasons in your life too. He's like, things change, you know? He says, oh my gosh, really? Do we need to talk? Oh my gosh, okay. Prince, you can't get too personal when I'm doing these public channeling videos. It's, it's tricky. He says when you're going through... Um... Okay, I'm going to edit you just a little bit, okay? He's like, matters of the heart. He didn't say it that way, but I'm just going to say it that way. Matters of the heart. He says, <laughs> there is never, I'm using my words, but this is his energy. He, what he's conveying is there is never ending content. There is never going, there are, ne there are never going to be enough songs, stories, movies, TV shows, art created about human relationships, love, misunderstandings, breakups, just purely trying to be in relationship, he says, has so many challenges, so many different dimensions, that there will be more than enough content forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Hey, Prince, when are they going to do a Prince movie? They just did an Elvis one. A couple years back, they did one about Freddie Mercury, Bohemian Rhapsody. I think I, I saw in the previews in the movie theater when I was at... Um, oh gosh, it was either Top Gun or Elvis movie. Um, but there's going to be a David Bowie movie too. So when are they going to do a Prince movie? He says, that's already been done. Yeah, as you as the kid in Purple Rain, which by the way, thank you so much. I am walking around, spending a lot of time outside, trying to process my stuff in a way that's healthy, trying to sift and sort and clear my energy and just heal myself and as I am walking around this weekend purple rain I hear purple rain I'm listening like 
Purple Rain? Okay, what? That's like, no offense to you, but that's an old song. That's like an oldie now. And it comes on and listening to it, and I'm just like, oh God. It never fails to not make me cry. And especially right now, it feels so... <sighs> like a life-changing moment. Like when in the movie, when your dad dies, the kid's dad dies, excuse me. <clears throat> the kid's dad dies, and the story about how he meets this beautiful woman and she's with somebody else and um, this, this kind of feeling of not really having anybody but yourself, not really being understood except when you were singing and on stage, except when you were making music and performing, that. Is that a reflection of real life for you? Was that? Or is that just something that I, as the consumer of your music at that moment, felt into and reflected in my life? Ah, he says, ah, Bridget. You know music is a reflection of emotion. It's emotion. In, in the humans, as humans, you have an incredible ability to feel very, very deeply. And he says, um, that's not a problem. It's become this problem. It's become, like I would use the word empathic, you guys. If you're empathic and you feel everybody's energy, it's become this problem. He says, it never should have been marked as that. Feeling is natural. Like you need to feel. If you don't feel, what's the point? He says, what's the point of being here? He's like, um, there are things that are coming through, these feelings that are coming through that he's kind of making me aware of, and that is impulsiveness and intensity and passion. And he's saying, um, part of that, he's saying part of the impulsive, like it looks like he, maybe he was impulsive, is part of what made him who he was. It's part of what made him super creative and like a machine when it comes to to producing music and, and ideas and all that and he says but when it comes to human relationship that's a hard thing to live with like he says I was hard to live with I was not easy to live with he says yes he acknowledges like because I'm in my head I'm going oh well you were fun right he says there's a difference between being fun and hanging out with someone and building a life with someone Ugh, he's referring to Maite oh yes he is not Manuela he's referring to Maite Yes, I had a friend that just posted yesterday some pictures of the belly dancing class from the beginning of June 2022 at here in Minnesota, where I went to a belly dancing class with Maite. Oh, yawn. Oh, sorry, it was not boring. I'm just yawning because it's not even 6 a.m. here. You would just be getting to bed, my friend. He said, yes, that's true. When the sun comes up, I went to sleep. <laughs> Sometimes. He says, not all the time, not all the time. When I was on vacation, he said, it wasn't always the case either, Bridget. He said, I kind of went into uh, spurts, you know, kind of went into blocks or chunks of time, you know. He says, I could never get bored and I could never be alone. If I was alone, that was, that was a problem for me, you know. So I was always with the stories in my head. You know, you guys, there is a little bit of an energy vibe. I'm going to say this. I'm, dare I say this? I don't think I've said this before. Mental health stuff, like a little bipolar stuff. There's definitely like this manic kind of vibe um, that definitely could be harnessed and used to create, to be successful in the music industry or what have you. So I'm not saying that it's a deficit, but um, I definitely feel that. And I don't know if we've talked about that before. Did you have vibes of depression? He says, I spent most of my life trying to outrun the sadness. Most of my life trying to outrun the sadness. What do you mean by that? Well, you can't, you can only ignore things for so long, he says, and then you have to quiet them down. Oh, like physical body pain, for example? Sure, like that. So you were hard to get along with, huh? Is that what you're saying? Maite expressed a lot of like that you were fun and that, you know, taking her clothes and that kind of a thing. And she was very um, 
she presents a side of you that is fun and enjoyable to be around and um, she's not at all disrespectful at least um, when I was you know in her presence and she was talking about you and she had a lot of different questions too <clears throat> how you feel about that he says yeah she's good people he says she's good people she's good people she did not deserve what happened not that anybody deserves anything that happens to us I think that there's this um, kind of preconceived notion that we create the consequences of our lives so that when things happen to us that aren't positive that are negative such as a disease or an illness or a death or a loss or um, a debilitating loss it could be mon money or job or whatever or, or life he says um, there's this idea that that's punishment he says that's not true that's not true hey I'm gonna give you guys a heads up it is garbage day so the garbage truck might come through <laughs> neighbor and you might be able to see that it's like we're gonna take out the trash Bridget I'm like yeah don't get it right it could be a skit as part of our channeling today <sighs> so when bad things happen it's not a consequence or punishment right he says, well, there are consequences to your actions. Yeah, he says, I, I don't want people to think that I felt like I had a free pass because I, I certainly didn't. I did not. I did not, he says. And he and you guys, he suffered plenty. He suffered plenty. He's showing me I suffered plenty. He says, um, sooner or later, you kind of get hard. You know, you get kind of hardened. Your heart gets a little hard and you don't want... Um, you don't want other people to know just how much, you know, how soft you are in the center, he says. <laughs> how soft you are in the center. That's right. Yes, that is correct. Yes, yes, yes. I 100% agree with you. I 100%. It's better to, I want to say boundaries. No, his, I'm like, it's better to just not let people in. Like, that's a good message for today. No, 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 no. You guys, I'm being sarcastic, by the way. That's Minnesota humor, Midwest humor. We're sarcastic, which does not translate into text. Let me tell you, it does not translate into text messaging. If you're text messaging with friends or anybody that is not from Minnesota, or even if they are, they will totally 100% misunderstand you on a text. They won't know if you're being funny or not. So you have to be, ha ha, this is sarcasm. There should be an emoji for that. <laughs> He's kind of like, what? <laughs> I never quite did understand social media. The Twitter tweety thing, whatever. Anything named after a bird, right? Hey, it's doves. You like doves. Okay. All right, so. Hmm. There's kind of this deeper, almost um, heaviness, kind of a sadness, I think that I can feel in your energetic field. And, and I feel this when I talk with you, when I've channeled you for the last, gosh, how many, how many years has it been? Six years now? Oh my gosh, it's been six years since we've been talking. That's a long time. That's a good friendship, I think. And when I channel you, there's kind of this heaviness a little bit. Here comes the garbage truck. Let's talk about what that is, what the symbolism of that is. It feels like grief, you guys. It feels a lot like grief. It feels a lot like grief. Do you have any advice on that? Grief? He says grief. He said it, it affects your heart. It's like once your heart gets infected, it's always kind of there, he says. Oh my gosh, Prince, that is not uplifting. He's like, Bridget, I'm a realist. I'm like, okay, <laughs> great, I'm a realist. Once your heart gets infected with grief, it's always kind of there. Okay, it's always there. I'm like, oh, geez. It's always there, you guys. He said, that's not to say it can ki it's going to kill you. That's not to say you can't you know feel good or have good moments or memory in your life he says it doesn't wreck you it doesn't have to destroy you i 
There's the garbage truck. Hello. What a lovely sunrise. Hey, people are doing their jobs. Nothing wrong with that. There's no small jobs, just small people, right? Can you imagine this person that works for this company gets to drive around early in the morning and watch the sunrise and probably doesn't have to deal with a ton of traffic and gets to just kind of chill when it's a beautiful day like today. I mean, it's cool this morning. It's like not, it's probably middle, not even middle 60s, I bet. Talk about this grief thing in the heart. So is there, can we heal from grief? I know you suffered loss in your life. Can we heal from grief? He's like, you mean relationships? Do you mean, like he's referring to love, uh, romance, relationships? It's like, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't even want to share what he just said. It's almost like there's always another one around the corner, kind of a vibe is kind of what he gives me. Um, he's, I don't think he's necessarily trying to be disrespectful at all. I think he's le legitimately just being blunt and straightforward, which he is very straightforward. Like he, there's no mystery as to what he's thinking about or what he feels because he tells you point blank what he feels. Sorry guys, and a little bit the garbage. You're hearing the garbage truck. To come early, yeah, it's like 6 a.m. here. There it goes. See you later. M one more stop near our house and then it'll be gone. Um, so, But people aren't just that expendable. He says, no, 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 that's not, I didn't say that. He said, I didn't say that. You make it sound bad, Bridget. He's trying to say that there's an abundance of opportunities for connection to be, to have people in your life, whether it be new musicians, you're always discovering new talent. He said, always discovering new talent. <laughs> or whether it be interpersonal, like in your personal life. Could be a whole bunch of things. You're always discovering new people. You always have the opportunity for new connections, he says, new connections. If you, and even if you, and he says, I'm like thinking, if you want that, if you don't want that, you just stay inside and you don't meet people. He says, <laughs> he's like, Bridget, that's no way to have a business. I'm like, I know, <laughs> he's going to dig on me. That's no way to run a business, Bridget, by not talking to people. Okay, I know, I know, I know. Hey, I had an in-person session this last week, okay? So I'm, I'm, I did okay. Um... But he's saying, even if you try not to meet people, you're going to meet people. You're going to encounter people. Like, that's just what, that's just the way it is, you know? Whether or not you talk to them again or how you let them into your life, that's your choice. And he says, but you will let them in again. So then why is your heart, like, kind of protected? Why is this grief kind of covering your heart a little bit? It looks a little coated or a little shielded. And you said it was because of grief. Well, well many of us, many of us can un relate to that, whether it's our kid went to college and moved away or whether we retired or we lost a job or we lost a loved one or maybe there was a betrayal and so there's this grieving, this loss or Whatever that looks like for you, you guys, because I know grief looks like it in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be an actual physical death. It can be an emotional death, a loss at, at some level, a huge misunderstanding or a betrayal. We'll use that word. Let's use that word. He's like, hmm, see, see, he said, see, now you're getting to it, Bridget. That's what I mean. That's what I mean, he says. The feelings that you have, the feelings that you have that are the wishing something could be different or the missing something that's not there anymore, whether it be your youthful, he's like, my, your youthful good looks, he says. Like to him, he's like kind of shaking his head a little bit, like kind of rubbing the side of his neck, like whether it be your youthful good looks or whatever that might be for you. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Do you really need to? Okay. He says, um, there's a loss there. You know, there's a feeling of, you know, there's sadness. He said, it's okay. 
it's okay to feel bad about stuff. It's okay. And it's okay that other people don't get it because they're not going to get you. And then I want to be like, hey, because then they're not your people, right? He said, exactly. You're exactly right. He said, there's a reason why your circle's small, why people have a close-knit group that they feel connected to, that they can trust and they can rely on. And, and he says, even in those close-knit circles, he said, there's misunderstandings. You know, you have, fa- you know, falling outs. You know that. You know that. People feel betrayed by you or, you or or you feel betrayed by people and there's just this this sense of loss and, and, and you grieve it, you know? You grieve what you thought it was. Or you grieve maybe having your youthful body, <laughs> he says. Maybe you grieve that, you know? Some people look back on nostal- and are nostalgic about high school or whatever it might be, you know? Or when you used to be able to dance like that and now your body doesn't move like that anymore. He says, ah, yes. Yes, I can very much relate to that. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that too, for sure. <clears throat> so, is there hope for us? You know, this grief piece to live with it, or to, he says that you don't really have a choice. You do live with it. How it affects you is where the choice comes in. He says, how it affects you, what you do with it. You can ignore it, you can numb it, you can try to push it away. He says, but it's pain, nonetheless, it's pain. He says, you can hold it so tight that you end up dying with it. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Yes. So when you died, did it, was there relief? He said, the physical body part. Yeah, the physical body piece. Yeah, yeah. He said, I'm not attached to a body. So I don't, I don't feel that, not in that way. What about the heart? Well, that's a different, that's a different story. He says, you feel the rhythm of the vibrations of the people you leave behind. And you understand the true meaning of connection. That's one thing I would say, he says, as far as advice goes. He said, that's one thing I would say. He says, I know it sounds really corny. But you really do need to tell the people you love that you love them. They need to know it. You can't just make assumptions that they know it because you got to show it. You got to show it. You got to show up. You got to show up because long after you're dead and you leave a body, that love, it lasts. It lasts forever. It's what brings you back into life again. It's what makes everything possible, everything. What you, what you call healing, it can happen when you're unhuman, you know. It can happen when you have a body. It can happen when you're in that, that marriage. It can happen when, when that person is dying of cancer. It can happen when you've had an accident and you can't do the same kind of job you've done before. It can happen when you wake up and realize all of the things that you've tried so hard to do right by. There's a part inside yourself that has always been right. And for me, that might look like he's saying, this is Prince. For me, that might look like I do what I want or I'm hyper-focused on my creative process, or it has to be a certain way, or it can't be this way, it has to be that way, that kind of thing. I might look like that, but that's because I'm always in the presence of that depth of understanding about what real connection is and what really matters. It's hard to describe it in any other way aside from a feeling it never really goes away. There's definitely many opportunities to live a life that is full. He says, you will be misunderstood. Every human being is misunderstood. Every human being. And to think that there's a sequence of consequences and punishments 
by some higher power. That higher power is what we're all collectively connected to. And the source of that power is love. And when you're acting or receiving in a manner that is in accordance with love, there's no one right way of this understanding, of this emotion. And, and when it becomes a contact or a connection, it is something that should really be should really, really be understood as something that transcends this life. It transcends this life. I can promise you that. He says, I can promise you that. I have a lot of wisdom now that I, I knew was right inside of me at the time, and yet I was so wrapped and kind of overthrown he says like overthrown overpowered by fear like I had this sense he said that I wouldn't get everything done and that I couldn't really be fully there for anyone in my life which is why having a family was not really in the cards for me and while while it may have seemed like I just went from person to person or relationship to relationship it's because in part of the fact that um I didn't really think any one person could really understand me or get me. And I didn't think it was fair to ask that one person devote themselves to doing that, to understanding me, to getting me. I am a hard sell, he says. (laughs) Oh, come on, you're magnetic and magic and people are attracted to you. Yeah, he says, yes, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Like he has that something, you're so charming, he says. And that doesn't translate well into a relationship, at least not a monogamous one. (laughs) Okay, gotcha. All right. I didn't think that was fair to ask anyone, really. He said, well, I might look like I'm selfish and egotistical. He says, I just, I knew it was right for me. And other people won't, just won't understand that, you know. He says they just won't understand that. So. All right, my friend, this was a good conversation. Hey, thanks all of you for watching the sunrise. Oh, it's beautiful this morning. Mm. Ugh, stepping into our week. Happy birthday to my sweet friend who's turning half a century this week. Hey. Mm. It's just the beginning. It's never too late to tell someone you love them or to show them how much they really mean to you. It's never too late to change your life, to live in alignment, to be in right alignment for you, to understand that everyone has a layer of grief and it's something that you might carry with you, but it doesn't have to harden you or make you jaded or angry. Or It can help you understand the truest value of human connection. And that, my friends, is inspiration for your spirit from Prince and the Afterlife. I hope that we have gifted you with some hope today, at least with some insight, to encourage you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.